This segment is sponsored by Hospice of Michigan. Sometimes our life's experiences are so profound, they impact everything that follows. Such was the case with Holly DeVivo. She is clinical advisor with Hospice of Michigan, a career inspired by the loss of her son and the end of life care provided to Alex and those who loved him. Welcome, Holly. I know that your tragic experience inspired a new career path. Tell me a bit about that. Sure. So um, with Alex, he had a congenital heart defect. Um, he was born with truncus arteriosus and throughout his life, he had six open heart surgeries. And um, when he was 13, he um, developed an infection in the aortic valve that he had had replaced. And um, very shortly after that, went into cardiac arrest. And the amazing physicians at Helen DeVos were able to revive him, but it became very apparent very quickly that he did not have a lot of time left with us here. And so at that point, um, the physicians and our family started talking about uh, focusing on comfort instead of cure. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to do some amazing uh, things with him, some amazing memories that we made with him. We made a hand mold. We made, um, we were able to watch his favorite TV shows. He loved the Big Bang Theory and able to read uh, his favorite books. And he was able to pass away peacefully um, with his entire family with him at his side. And at the time that he died, I was working as a medical interpreter and translator for a lot of the different medical clinics and hospitals in, that, in our area, and also was pursuing a PhD in sociology and anthropology. And once he died, I realized that that was not what I was called to do in this mm -hmm. life. I, I woke up one morning and said, I'm really not happy with what I'm doing, and life is very short, and so I need to make a change. So I went back to school. I changed my program from a PhD in sociology to a master's in social work. Um, I'm still at Western, go Broncos. Um, and um, I will be finishing that this year. And my graduate advisor uh, alerted me to a position at Hospice of Michigan. And I jumped at that opportunity because it is a way for me to honor Alex's life and honor his, um, honor his, his life story in a way that continues to give his life and his loss meaning forward. It's a, it's a beautiful story. Tell me a little bit about, I mean, not only do you honor his, his life, you walk beside other people so that they can give their loved ones the same kind of dignified end of life experience. Um, talk a little bit about how that has impacted the way you interact with those folks. Absolutely. Um, it is an incredible honor to walk with these families while they're going through this end of life journey. It's a journey that I understand intimately as a loved one and as a caregiver. And it's something that I can, I'm able to sit down with families and say, I understand that that this is an incredibly hard moment that you're going through. And I understand the ins and outs and let us help you navigate things that you may not think about. The grief support that I received after Alex passed was what got us through that first year. And so being able to be there in that situation and talk to families and say, I know what you're going through. I understand this, but I also know that I have an amazing team that's going to help you get through this difficult part of our of your journey and also what 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 waits us after our loved one is gone. Um, I know that with the team that I have that we are able to to do amazing things for families and, and patients. Mm. You are also and you mentioned a certified medical translator. What do you do in that capacity? Sure. So as a certified medical interpreter and translator, it was my role to facilitate communication with doctors and hospital and uh, clinics, healthcare providers, and families uh, and patients who were limited English proficient, uh, specifically Spanish speaking. And so in my role at hospice, one of the things that I am most passionate about is reaching out to members of communities that uh, maybe don't utilize hospice services as much as they may need them and making sure that our services are available to all patients, regardless of um, their ability to speak English or their background. Well, it, it's, it's beautiful the way you've taken all of your life and applied it, it with Hospice of Michigan. And we want to let folks know they can learn more about all of the services provided by Hospice of Michigan on their website. It is hom.org. Holly, thank you so much. 
Thank you, Catherine. It was a pleasure.